Imagine this. You have spent years learning English, memorized grammar rules, aced vocabulary tests, but when it comes to speaking English, something's just off. You get stuck, you hesitate. Sound familiar? Well, you are not alone in this. In fact, most non-native speakers face the same problem when it comes to speak English. And then it's because of the mistakes that you are making and maybe you haven't taken any steps to correct them. Today in this video, we are going to uncover exactly what they are and we'll fix them once and for all. I have spent over nine years helping students break through their language barriers. And if there's one thing that I have learned, it's this. The small mistakes can hold you back in big ways. But don't you worry, you are about to change that. Stay with me and by the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to speaking English like a pro. Ready to dive in? Okay, let's talk about the biggest mistakes you might be making while learning English and more importantly, how to avoid them. Because trust me, once you learn these tips, your progress will skyrocket. All right, let's jump straight into the first mistake. And this one is super common. Translating directly from your native language. For beginners especially, I have seen this tendency that slows down their progress. Imagine this, you are thinking in your native language. Maybe Bengali, Hindi. Spanish, whatsoever. And you are translating word for word into English. Sounds logical, right? But here's the thing. Every language has its own style, structure, grammatical rules, and idioms. And when you translate directly, you end up with sentences that is awkward and downright confusing. Look at this example. In some languages, you might say, I am going to home. But in English, we don't use to before the word home, especially when it means going to your own house or residence. So it's just, I am going home. And as you can see, translating directly will often lead to sentences that don't quite hit the mark. My tip, try to reverse yourself in English as much as possible. Listen to English podcasts, songs, or watch English shows, movies. You can also go and read English books. Get used to how native speakers phrase things. And it will help you to start thinking in English instead of translating. Trust me, the more you expose yourself to the language, the easier it will be to pick up the natural sentence patterns. If you want some of my recommendations on English cartoons or songs, you can definitely watch those videos. These are super helpful. Okay, let's make it more interactive. I'm going to show you two sentences and I want you to tell me the one that sounds more natural to you. Freddy, you're at it. Which one sounds right to you? Is it making a photo or taking a photo? It's taking a photo. In English, we don't say making a photo, though it might make sense in other languages. We always say, take a photo. See how learning natural phrases can make a huge difference. Mistake number two, overusing present continuous tense. This one I see all the time, especially from students who are just getting started. So many of you are excited to describe actions that are happening right now and you end up saying like this, I am liking this food, I am knowing the answer. So in English, these sentences are totally incorrect. We don't use the ing form with words that describe states or facts. So instead of, I am liking this food, just say, I like this food. Or I am knowing this answer, just say, I know this answer. Learning when to use simple present tense versus present continuous tense can make your English sound more natural. And I know this can be confusing enough, but for your further help, here's a list that shows the verb, which don't take ing form. Don't worry, we'll dive deeper into this later with more examples. Now it's your turn. Fill in the blank and here's the sentence. Should it be love or loving? What do you think? Can you quickly write it in the comments below? The correct answer is, I love my new shoes. Again, 
we don't use the continuous form with emotions like love, like or hate. Keep practicing and you'll soon learn it. Now let's talk about mistake number three. And this one's a biggie. This can completely change the meaning of your sentence. I'm talking about ignoring the articles A and the. These tiny words might seem unimportant, but in English, these are critical. Skipping them or using them incorrectly can make your sentence incomplete and confusing. Look at this example. I saw cat. Without an article, it sounds confusing and strange. But if you add a or the here, it becomes clear. So you can say, I saw a cat if you're talking about any cat. Or I saw the cat. The when you are talking about a specific cat that both the speaker and the listener know about. See how powerful articles can be. My tip? Pay close attention to articles. And remember, in English, we use them before singular nouns. If you can, then please try and practice with short sentences to get comfortable with articles. Okay, now let's dive a little deeper into this article thing. And I know it's a bit tricky when it comes deciding between a or the. So let's break it down. Use a or an when you're talking about something for the first time or in general. For example, I saw a dog in the park. You are introducing the dog for the first time, so it's indefinite. Use the when you're talking about something specific or something already known. For example, the dog is barking loudly. See, here you're talking about the dog, the same dog that you introduced earlier. See, it's all about the context. Understanding when to use a, an or the will help your sentences flow naturally. Next up, pronunciation. Oh God, this is a funny one. You see, a lot of non-native speakers struggle with specific English sounds such as these two. And these sounds can be tricky because in many other languages, they don't exist. Let's take th for example. In English, you need to put your tongue between your teeth and blow air out. It might feel strange at first, but it's very important for words like think, think, 30, 30, 3, 3. Without that TH sound, these words might sound like sink, tree, dirty. And you can see how it's becoming confusing and it can definitely lead to some funny mix-ups. Okay, let's practice together. I'm going to say you a word and you are going to repeat after me. All right, ready? Thank. Thank. Thief, thief, thunder, thunder, thumb, thumb, be silent here, thought, thought, thick, thick. Great job. The more you practice, the better you will get. And let's not forget the V sound. Make sure to place your top teeth on your bottom lip. And let the sound vibrate. So instead of saying very, say very, very. Make sure to get that vibration in there. Let's practice. Video. Video. Visit. Visit. Village. Village. Vacation. Vacation. Victory. Victory. You can do it, I know. All right, let's move on to the fifth mistake. It should be and it must be overcomplicating your sentences. I know, I know that you want to sound smart and fluent, but see, here's the thing. Native speakers actually prefer short and simple sentences. Now, instead of this huge sentence, you can literally come up with a simpler version. For example, you could say it easily like this. I've been working on the report and I'll finish it soon. See the difference? The second sentence is clear, concise and still 
gets the point across. You don't need to use fancy or complex words to communicate effectively. Remember, less is more. Let's practice together. Now I'm going to show you a long sentence which you have to simplify. Ready? Okay, here's your sentence. How would you simplify this? Share your answers in the comments and let's see who can make it the shortest. I get it. Learning a new language can be scary. But here's the thing. Fluency doesn't come just from studying. You need to speak the language. The more you'll speak, the more comfortable you will get. In my previous videos, I've shared some engaging and practical tips to practice English speaking alone at home. Do check those out. And before we wrap up, let me leave you with a final thought. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. I know it sounds cliche, but making mistakes is actually a good thing. Why? Because every mistake you make is an opportunity to learn. So don't shy away from speaking or writing because you are afraid of getting it wrong. Remember, fluency comes from practice, not perfection. Keep pushing yourself. Keep practicing and don't be afraid to stumble along the way. You are doing great and every step you take is a progress. So these are five biggest mistakes non-native English speakers make. And now you know how to avoid them, right? Did any of these resonate with you? Let me know that in the comments below and also how are you going to fix them. Also, don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful. Share it with your friends and subscribe this channel for more such amazing English learning contents. Let's continue this English learning journey together and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, keep practicing and stay confident.